Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Bank. Today we have a new result from the second efficacy NMN human trial, which comes from a team at Tokyo University and is currently a preprint which is undergoing peer review. This is the second NMN efficacy trial and is different from the first trial whose participants were pre-diabetic women in that the participants are healthy and the study examined features of aging rather than markers of a particular disease. There were a couple of items that I found interesting and wanted to highlight. Both the studies showed NAD increased levels with the NMN supplementation. This graph shows the increase in blood NAD in this recent trial. In terms of measuring muscle capabilities, in the trial there was a number of physical tests such as gait speed, 30 second chair stand and grip strength. If we look at the results from the placebo group we can see that they all declined or stayed the same. Whereas in the NMN group they all increased and this was with quite a low dose of 250 milligrams per day. Let's review the paper. First a disclaimer that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Preclinical trials, mostly in men, have shown that elevating NAD through NMN supplementation can mitigate age-related disorders, but there are few human trials. In this study, the authors looked at whether chronic NMN supplementation can elevate blood NAD and alter physiological dysfunction in elderly participants. The dose was 250 milligrams of NMN daily given orally for either 6 or 12 weeks in a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blind, parallel group trial. Their key findings include that the supplement was well tolerated and blood NAD and NAD metabolites were significantly increased. NMN also increased muscle strength and performance as evaluated with a 30-second chair stand test, walking speed and grip strength. There was no change in body composition. In summary, the evidence shows that NMN supplementation does boost NAD and help prevent age-related muscle dysfunction in humans. In more detail, the participant's inclusion criteria was male, over 65, with a BMI between 22 and 28, a non-smoker with no active diseases. They first checked that NMN was well tolerated and caused no adverse effects. To do this, they checked blood markers, such as the cholesterol levels, liver markers and markers of inflammation. There was no significant difference between the placebo and NMN groups, and all the clinical markers remained within the normal range. There have been reports that nicotinamide or NMN could increase CRP levels, but looking specifically at this marker, we can see that in this study there was no significant difference. Oral NMN did raise NAD levels in the blood. They also raised NR, which perhaps shows the NMN being converted to NMR by CD73. They also saw other metabolites of NMN raised such as nicotinic acid mononucleotide and nicotinic acid riboside. They did speculate as to how these metabolites were created but did not have a conclusion in the paper. Here we can see the change in NMN, NAD and NR levels. In particular, we can see a significant jump in NAD levels for the NMN group over the placebo group, and also an increase in NR. Looking at muscle function, they did see improvements in gait speed and left grip test, and in the 30 second chair stand test at the six weeks mark. Here is the table with the results from the physical tests. If we look at gait speed, for example, we can see the placebo group scored lower at the end than at the beginning, starting from 1.36 and ending at 1.30. But we see the NMN group increased over the same period, going from 1.45 to 1.47 to 1.60. But except for the week 12, the differences did not cross the 0.05 p-value line. In all the cases, it seems similar, with the placebo group being flat or down and the NMN group being slightly up which does seem to indicate NMN has a positive effect, even if it does not clear the significance hurdle in some cases. There was, however, no significant difference observed in the skeletal muscle mass or visceral fat percent. The authors also looked at other phenotypes of aging, such as sensory, vascular and cognitive. 
Interestingly, they report that hearing in the right ear improved. There was no change in vascular function, such as blood pressure. They did not see improved cognitive function with tests that they ran. Their summary is that 250 mg per day of NMN was safe and well tolerated and did increase NAD and NAD metabolites in the blood. It also improved muscle strength and performance. So they conclude it could be an effective strategy against age-related muscle disorders such as sarcopenia. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.